Hi, I'm Chef Kevin Reading of Abbott's Grill, and welcome to Flavor, a show based on interesting people and places of the Chesapeake region. From culinary artisans to craftsmen around the area, we'll interview them, and I'll bring back the product and show you what I would do with it. So stay tuned, and hopefully we'll learn something together. Pfeiffer Orchards, homegrown fruits and vegetables since 1919. Bring the family and come enjoy the best the season has to offer. Pick your own apples and pumpkins. Enjoy wholesome entertainment for the kids. Now is the time to reserve your turkey and pies for the holidays. Pfeiffer Orchards. From our lands, direct to your hands. When Abbott's Grill throws a party, you know it has to be good. From small business lunches and cocktail parties to full-service wedding receptions and off-site catering, Abbott's Grill makes planning simple and stress-free. We take care of every detail so you can enjoy your events. Abbott's Grill has catering options for every budget. Call 302-491-6736 or contact Laura Burton at abbottsgrillde.com. Be a guest at your own party with Abbott's Grill Private Dining and Catering. Hi, welcome to Miss Billion Fitness. Everything from step mills to treadmills, arc trainers, ellipticals, upright bikes, recumbent bikes, and even a couple of rowers. At Miss Billion Fitness, we have over 23 classes on the schedule every week from body pump to kickboxing to boot camps, spin classes. We do small group training, we have personal training, we even offer judo jiu jitsu programs. We have a little bit of everything for everybody. Hi, welcome to Wyoming, Delaware. I'm here with Mike Fenimore, the owner of Pfeiffer's Orchards, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Kevin, for having us. Yeah, we go back quite a number of years, and you know I've been buying a lot of your product for a long time, and people have been loving it on their menus. So I'm very happy to bring you to uh, to some of the viewers today. Yeah, well, we appreciate all the support over the years, and all the different fruits and vegetables that that you've incorporated from our farm into your restaurant. And uh, it's been a it's been a great working relationship, and uh, all the different uh, restaurants on Delmarva have been such a support to our family farm, and uh, we certainly appreciate all that well, you do for us. My pleasure. But you're more than just a farm, and <laughs> I mean you're just everywhere. I turn, you know, I see your land everywhere. You're growing all kinds of apples, and you're I'll see you in Dewey, you know, with a farm stand that you have there. So tell us about that. How outreaching you're going with your product. Well, I think, uh, you know, all along our, our farm has been, uh, you know, connected with the community. Uh, we've been here in Wyoming since 1919, uh, going way back uh, when my great granddad moved here in 1919 from Virginia. Uh, I think he always, you know, had a big, uh, you know, direct, uh, direct relationship with the community. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, we continue today. Yeah. Um, and we do that in a number of different ways. We obviously grow and sell fruits and vegetables, sell it to um, you know grocery stores, uh, Wegman stores in DC and Baltimore, uh, Giant, um, Whole Foods, Harris Teeters, a lot of mm -hmm. different uh, you know larger uh, grocery uh, store accounts. Um, but we also go direct to the, to the consumer right. through our stores. Uh, here at the farm, down in Dewey Beach, as you mentioned. Uh, we go to a number of farmers markets, uh, tailgate markets, if you will. Uh, and then we have our CSA, which right. is a um, you know subscription type uh, program that uh, has grown over the years sure, as well. Sure, very popular. And, and then going direct to the, to the restaurants, to schools. Yeah. Uh, we're very diverse in how we, how we sell the product and very diverse in what we grow, which is not just one or two things. No, it's, no, you're all as over. you see behind us, pumpkins, strawberries, right. peaches, seven uh, varieties of apples. Or yeah, 20, 25 varieties 25 of apples. 25 varieties <laughs> of apples. Yeah, yeah that's 30, 31 different types of peaches. Oh, wow. Um, you know, all kinds of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Right. So right now we're in the uh, coal crop season, which 
uh, includes uh, the brassica type uh, crops, the broccoli, cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts, kale. We have two or three different types of kale, the Tuscan kale, which is a flat black kale. Um, and then we also have sweet potatoes uh, and those kind of crops that are coming off here in the fall. So on Delmarva, because of our climate, uh, our microclimate, which is pretty moderate, um, we can grow a lot of things in the fall season that folks don't always expect. Um, you know, our, we're pretty, pretty mild uh, compared to the Northeast, and that allows us to grow some things later into the season. Uh, we're obviously still harvesting apples, uh, pressing apple cider from those apples, uh, and then of course the uh, the fall squash, the acorn, butternut, uh, spaghetti squash. I love fall. Kind of I love you know, from the cooking side of it. Yeah. it's probably my favorite season. I mean, probably that going into summer, but you know, type of cooking. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All the different chowders and oh, the soups amazing. and the, amazing. Uh, yeah, it's it is a great. Yeah. Like food time here. Have you noticed, and I mean, I have a little bit, but the last 10 years about the education of the consumer? Absolutely. I yeah. think that uh, the consumer is becoming more conscious of where their food comes from uh, and even down to the point of who's growing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been a real treat for us as, as uh, growers to, to get to see that process take place where uh, there's kind of an enlightenment of, uh, you know, knowing where your food comes from. And, learning as much as you can about it. I think that's been part of the, the uh, you know, the increase in our foot traffic into our stores that people right. like to be able to come to the source uh, to see it, see an active farm in action. Right. Uh, when we have our festivals and events, folks come out, they take a hayride, we give them a narrated tour uh, to, you know, give them, you know, entertainment, but yeah. also educate yeah. at the same time. And it's the same thing right now with our corn maze, uh, Fun Park, we have uh, school groups that come from all over the sure. peninsula. And, uh, you know, a lot of these kids have never been on a farm. Oh, yeah. And uh, we take them and show them a pumpkin plant and how the comes from the flower. Right. And, right. and the same thing in the spring. I think it just, sort of just shows up in the grocery store. That's right. They have no idea <laughs> it comes from a tree or the ground. Or the, yeah. yeah, and they're just fascinating. You know? yeah. that's, that's really the, uh, the uh, most rewarding part of our job is that we get to see those smiles and those, those moments yeah. of you know discovery that yeah. that you don't see uh, you know yeah. a lot of times. Well, it's really I love coming out here. Uh, it's a wholesome atmosphere. You have a, a number of the Amish uh, mm -hmm. working here. You're we making do. cider donuts <laughs> out here. The, the smell uh, that you know when we do events out here with you. Um, you know, you just kind of, it just, it's a make, make you feel good type of environment. So how did you create that? You know, that, that that's uh, just who we are. I mean, yeah. the, uh, the, the, a lot of, uh, a lot of it ha hasn't really been created. It's just part of our DNA. I mm -hmm. think, um, you know, the Amish are, are a big part of the Dover community. Uh, we've had a long lasting relationship with, uh, such a, you know, terrific neighbors as they are. Um, over the year, actually, some of our first retail customers, I think, would have been Amish folks right. that uh, were riding by and saw that we had apples being packed. Right. And uh, so, actually, our country store today was a packing house in the 1800s okay. and early 1900s, even before we started farming here. Right. Um, and uh, so that that sort of started the uh, the retail business, if you will, and then. Uh, you know, today we um, we try to keep it down on the farm. Yeah. You know, we don't have air conditioning in our store. It's an open air market. It's got creaky floors and and uh, you know all the antique uh, type of things. Uh, but you know that's just part of the character of, of the store. And I think what draws people here is that they know it's authentic. That it's a real experience. Um, it's not a grocery store. We don't you know intend to be a grocery store. But what we try to provide is unique. Things like the apple cider donuts, the local honey that comes off our farm, uh, apple butter, uh, some, some unique things that you might not see at the grocery store. Right. Exactly. Besides all this wonderful product that you have, you're a master of events, <laughs> and it just seems like you have one after another. And so, can you tell us about the events and maybe yeah. how it started? Sure. So we try to celebrate the seasons. That's a big part of what we do. Is again going back to the education. We want to. Uh, have people learn when things are in season here on Delmarva and for us uh, you know strawberries you see behind us are growing now in the fall right. so they can get a head start for the springtime we'll start harvesting those hopefully in April uh, and in, into May 
A lot of folks that move down to the peninsula from say New York or New Jersey or Pennsylvania, they're used to June and July being strawberry season. So we're trying to educate them on the seasons and that's why we have our strawberry festival in May. Uh, in, the, in the summertime, we have a customer appreciation day called Peach Ice Cream Day in August. Uh, and then in the fall, our, our fall, fest, uh, fall Fest goes on for uh, six consecutive weeks. Right. Uh, that includes our pick your own pumpkins, pick your own apples, the corn maze, uh, all kinds of food vendors like Abbott's Grill is right. here on Saturdays. And uh, you know, tons of different activities for families, like you said, wholesome down on the farm right. kind of activities. Uh, and then we, we keep on going right into uh, November. We have uh, Thanksgiving turkeys and pies. Uh, our holiday open house where we have free hay rides uh, and, uh, and then our cider fest right. in December. So it started to rain a little bit, so we moved our show inside to the uh, trolley here. But uh, the, uh, it, it's just never ending how much you keep going. And yeah, there, we, t we take it right till Christmas. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right, but so the, the store's uh, open the whole time. And I yes, think if any yeah. one thing you want to tell people, because in the middle of the summer and the peak parties, you're, you're, you're very busy. Mm -hmm. uh, in the winter time, it doesn't stop. The store's open, so Correct, still, yeah. they still have the ability to come out and still do their shopping here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even after Thanksgiving, uh, you know, the days get short, you know, right. it gets dark early. Um, we do start closing the store at 5 o'clock at night instead of 6, uh, but we are open six days a week, uh, right up until Christmas. Um, you know, we have our Cider Fest uh, Saturdays, uh, where again we have free hay rides and free hot cider, and uh, it gets people out to the farm where they can uh, take a look for a Christmas tree or a fresh wreath to put on their door for Christmas. Um, we still have lots of apples and cider, yeah. the sweet potatoes, uh, all the different fall veggies uh, are still available. And um, like I said, our last day of the year is December 23rd. Okay. Um, that's when the store closes for the season and then we're right back at it in March. Yeah. So it's a, it's a real short uh, time that our store's not open. We are still here daily, right. uh, even in January, February, March, we're working um, for the next year. and. and uh, doing a lot of prep work, uh, irrigation work. Um, you know, a lot of people think that farmers, uh, when it gets cold outside, they just hibernate and uh, or go to Florida. But that, that's not the case, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> uh, there's a lot, a lot that yeah. gets done in the winter time, uh, just a different kind of work. And uh, and then usually by the middle to end of March, uh, we open again. the store again. Yeah. Well, I always love your product. And so speaking of that, I'm going to grab a handful of things. So we're going to take it back to the restaurant. Perfect. And I'm going to yeah. kind of show kind of a couple of ideas that I would do with, with your product. Outstanding. So, hey, I appreciate Thanks you again, taking Kevin. the time. Thanks again, Kevin. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, look forward to many more years together. Yep, same, with you. same so, here. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pfeiffer Orchards, homegrown fruits and vegetables since 1919. Bring the family and come enjoy the best the season has to offer. Pick your own apples and pumpkins. Enjoy wholesome entertainment for the kids. Now is the time to reserve your turkey and pies for the holidays. Pfeiffer Orchards. From our lands, direct to your hands. Hey, Eric here. Don't miss a thing at Miss Pillion River Brewing, the world's premier craft brewery located in Milford, Delaware. Stop on by for a sample, or a six pack, or a growler, or if you just want to stop by and have a pint. Check us out at MissPillionRiverBrewing.com. Hi, welcome to Miss Pillion Fitness. Everything from step mills to treadmills, arc trainers, ellipticals, upright bikes, recumbent bikes, and even a couple of rowers. At Miss Pillion Fitness, we have over 23 classes on the schedule every week from body pump to kickboxing to boot camps, spin classes. We do small group training, we have personal training. 
We even offer Judo Jiu Jitsu program. We have a little bit of everything for everybody. A master of farm to table cuisine, an award winning duo of local ingredient brewing, join forces to create a culinary experience made from the best that Delaware has to offer. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, a made from scratch fusion of Delaware's best, like glazed baby back ribs and apple jalapeno slaw, paired with drop trowel, Brickworks exclusive unfiltered IPA. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, made from scratch from plate to glass. Welcome back. We're at Abbott's Grill Kitchen right now, and we had a great interview with Mike Fenimore from Pfeiffer's Orchards. Uh, one of the things that I, when I think fall, it kind of got in the mood when we were out there, is to do a pumpkin gnocchi dish that we do. Uh, it's kind of like a dumpling type thing, and we use a parachute gnocchi recipe. It's an old Thomas Keller recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with one cup of water, four ounces of butter, I'm gonna go ahead and use just a pinch or two. I got a little salt and pepper mixture here, so we're gonna start that way. We're gonna use one cup of firmly pressed pumpkin, because I have a Jardin pumpkin here that we can take, or you can have regular pie pumpkin and roast them all, kind of cut them in half, take the seeds out, roast them, maybe season them a little salt and pepper, roast them about 30 or 40 minutes, 350 degrees. With the outside of when you press on the flesh, they'll be really soft. Cool them down, put them in your food processor, puree it down, and you have your own fresh pumpkin for savory or for your pumpkin pie for the holidays. I'm gonna add some of the traditional pumpkin pie seasonings. I got a little fresh thyme, little sage, and in here I put a little bit of ground ginger, clove, allspice, and a touch of nutmeg. So I'm gonna add both of those in right now. I'm gonna add a little bit of sage. And the thing I like to do, I love pumpkin and mushroom together. We have porcini powder that you can get at, uh, I'm not sure where you can get it, probably at a gourmet type uh, thing, but it's basically, uh, or you can dehydrate any kind of mushroom, even shiitake, but I'm using porcini, which are very elegant Italian uh, mushroom that's seasonal. But I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of that into the mixture. You can see right here, it's all coming together. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of all-purpose flour and this will soak it up and it will turn into a nice little dough. Try to cook as much of the moisture out as I can. You'll see as it'll start to come together, it'll take it all in. Believe it or not, it's going to happen. You can see it kind of coming together there. So I'm going to put it back on the stove. We're going to start cooking the liquid out of it. This process will take about four or five minutes and you wanna keep working with it. Maybe even turn your temperature down so you don't scorch it. But the drier you can make the dough, the tighter the dough will be. Make it easier to, to roll out. So at this point, we're starting to dry it out pretty well. I'm gonna add a cup of Parmesan Reggiano and kind of incorporate that in. We're gonna transfer it to a mixing bowl and we're gonna incorporate eggs to that. So the secret is to incorporate the eggs one at a time. It'll separate and then it comes back together. What I do is kind of pulse it. I start on a low speed there and I'll add my first egg and then I'll pick up the speed. So one goes in and then I'll bring it. It starts to separate. And you'll see it all start coming back together and then repeat the next process. Next one, pick up the speed, incorporate, reduce the speed, pick it up. Once you've got the first couple in, you can start adding them a little more quickly and put that last one in there. And it all comes together. You have a nice dough. Pumpkin has a lot of moisture in it. Often you'll have to put it out on a table. What I do next is it still has a little wetness to it, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of flour to it on either side as it incorporates until it starts to pull away from the side a little bit. You don't want it too doughy, so there's a fine little touch there, just until it starts coming together. We'll go ahead and put it out on the table. And we're gonna kind of knead it really gently. I, I'm trying not to overwork the glutens too much. 
to make make the uh, dumplings or the patish the gnocchis tough. And the idea, I just want to kind of get it where that breast that moisture is is uh, kind of taking place. And just should feel like a pasta dough if you're used to making pasta doughs. I think that's pretty close to where we are. Maybe just a touch more. So I'm pretty happy with the dough right now. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up, let it rest for about a half an hour before we start rolling it out and cutting them into little gnocchis. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Pfeiffer Orchards, homegrown fruits and vegetables since 1919. Bring the family and come enjoy the best the season has to offer. Pick your own apples and pumpkins. Enjoy wholesome entertainment for the kids. Now is the time to reserve your turkey and pies for the holidays. Pfeiffer Orchards. From our lands, direct to your hands. When Abbott's Grill throws a party, you know it has to be good. From small business lunches and cocktail parties to full-service wedding receptions and off-site catering, Abbott's Grill makes planning simple and stress-free. We take care of every detail so you can enjoy your events. Abbott's Grill has catering options for every budget. Call 302-491-6736 or contact Laura Burton at abbottsgrillde.com. Be a guest at your own party with Abbott's Grill Private Dining and Catering. Hi, welcome to Miss Billion Fitness. Everything from step mills to treadmills, arc trainers, ellipticals, upright bikes, recumbent bikes, and even a couple of rowers. At Miss Billion Fitness, we have over 23 classes on the schedule every week from body pump to kickboxing to boot camps, spin classes. We do small group training, we have personal training. We even offer judo jiu jitsu programs. We have a little bit of everything for everybody. So I went ahead and uh, refrigerated this for about a half an hour and the idea is you want a little bit of uh, flour on it just uh, help it so you're not sticking too much because it does still have a doughiness to it. So you want to cut off a little piece like that and kind of work together. If you, if you have too much flour on your surface as you start to roll out your gnocchi, they, uh, it'll start to separate. The flour will try to incorporate into it. So we're gonna try to beat that. Still has a little bit of wetness to it, so we wanna add a little bit over here. Just for right now, cut that off. I'm gonna put a little bit of the flour on the end of my knife and just go ahead and cut these off here like that. I'm gonna go ahead and have some salted uh, boiling water behind me. We're gonna go ahead and get these going. The idea is they'll come to a, a surface here. They've been floating in the salted water here now for about uh, two or three minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and invert these out. I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of oil. And these can be done in advance. We'll do, for the restaurant, we'll do many batches ahead of time and just refrigerate them. And they work, actually, sometimes work better when they're, when they're a little more firm, they firm up. So we'll just go ahead and set this out of the way. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start a little pumpkin gnocchi dish with the Pfeiffer's apples. Uh, we have one of the Granny Smith apples here. And we're just gonna do a real classic Italian uh, dish. It's cooking the uh, gnocchis down with ground butter and sage. So what I did prior to that, because it takes a little time, I actually took a half a pound of butter and I put some fresh sage leaves in it and I took it right to it became an amber brown and then I strained, strained it through cheesecloth. So it does two things there when you it's kind of like clarifying it so some of the milk solids go to the bottom and that's kind of what burns when you're cooking with butter and wondering why it burns and you got these little uh, pieces in there. 
If you either clarify or brown it, then you're kind of eliminating that out. So your viscosity of your cooking is a little higher. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the butter in here. And then we had gnocchis that we'd already let cool down a little bit. So we're gonna put a nice handful of them because normally we would use these as a side component, like a chicken and dumplings, or just do them as, as an appetizer. And that's what I'm gonna do right here. So I have a couple sage leaves that I'm actually gonna put in the bottom here. I can't believe my sage plant is still working in the, on the patio. So I was able to get a couple sage leaves. And it's always nice to have a little touch of fresh thyme. And I just like the sound of the popping of the thyme, if you can hear that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the apple. I'm gonna take the rind off here, the outside. And what I'm looking for is that gnocchi to kind of brown on one side. And I'm gonna deglaze with the Pfeiffer's Orchard Cider. And right now their cider is the best around and uh, it'll be available, I think now to almost Christmas. So I highly recommend you, you going by and picking up a couple gallons for the holidays. And that's probably enough for right now for this one. So we're gonna sweat that in the butter. Then we're gonna add a little bit of walnut to it. Pinch of salt and pepper. I'll work that. No, I'm not really stirring it too much because I really want one side of it to brown. Because I'm trying to get it to brown on one side. Then when I add the cider, it's going to deglaze it. And what I'm hoping for, it pops right off the pan. Then I'll toss it. And then the cider, as it reduces, mixes with the brown butter, emulsifies, and becomes the sauce. I'm going to add it right here. And that's what's kind of bringing it up. And I'll work it in there. Other things that you want to, you could do as well, is you could end up uh, using a little mushroom into it. Told you earlier about the mushrooms. So you can see a couple brown bits right there. As it starts to thicken up, apples are cooking, the walnuts are cooking. I'm getting a nice thick sauce on it. At this point, you could actually add a little Parmesan or something to it. But I'm actually, I have a little Midnight Moon uh, cheese. I'm gonna sh shave a little bit of that on top. So on our plate, we have a nice mixture right there. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of pomegranate seeds. And this is Midnight Moon cheese here. And I'm just gonna do a couple quick slivers off of that. And we will go ahead and just kind of set that around here. If you wanted to use Parmesan Reggiano, um, knock yourself out. But that's it right there. So cider glazed pumpkin yonkey with midnight moon and pomegranates. Whenever you have a chance, take a trip out to Pfeiffer's. Uh, you won't regret it. They have the uh, stores going to be open, I believe, all the way into December. Uh, the only day that they're unavailable is Sunday. And uh, they have the open till 5 o'clock uh, come fall, winter hours. And come see them. I hope you enjoyed the recipe uh, as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. So I'm Kevin Reading and I appreciate you staying with me. We'll see you next week.